everyone. Thank you for joining us today. What a joy it is to have you with us. And we've got some exciting things to share with you. You know, pr normally we have a live audience in our studio where I'm teaching from the Word of God. But today we want to show you a very powerful service where I preached a message about visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit in Kenneth Copeland's Southwest Believers Convention last year. Now, it's a powerful message, and I want to encourage you to watch very closely. You know, Jesus said in the 16th chapter of the book of John that the Holy Spirit, when He comes, He will not only lead and guide you into all truth, but He will show you things to come. The Lord showed me that we're headed for some of the greatest visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit that we have ever experienced before. Why is that so important? Simply because it's wonderful to preach the Word, but the Word is supposed to be accompanied with signs, wonders, and miracles. That's what gets the attention of people. And I believe that's what it's going to take in these last days to get the attention of masses of people who don't know God but when they see the signs, the wonders, and the miracles, they're going to want to know the God we serve. So I want you to watch this very closely. It's the introduction to this message, part one, on visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Ghost. John chapter 16, beginning in verse 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but what he shall hear, that shall he speak, and show you things to come. Everybody say, show you things to come. So it shouldn't sound strange to us when someone stands up and says, the Lord has shown me something that is coming. Particularly when you have confidence in that person's ability to hear the voice of the Lord. Brother Copeland stand up and says, the, the word of the Lord has come to me. He's got my attention. There's been many times over the last 46 years that we've been preaching together that he has said, wait a minute, Jerry, the word of the Lord's come to me saying this and speak over me prophetically. Well, right here on this stage in August of 1991, Brother Copeland had just introduced me to speak in an evening service and he got ready to walk away and he turned around and said, wait a minute, Jerry, the Lord just once just said this to me and I'm tell you. And he said these words, God is moving you into a new dimension of ministry this day. He's adding to your life and ministry, the office of the seer. He will begin to show you in the spirit things to come and then it'll hold you responsible for sharing them with the body of Christ wherever he may send you. So he said, you're going to start seeing things that are coming. That was 1991. In September of 1991, one month later, I went to hear Brother Hagen in a meeting in Riverside, California. I'd been preaching all over Southern California for a whole week and I had one night off, a Saturday night, and I knew Brother Hagen was in Riverside, so I had made plans to be in that meeting. I was in Los Angeles, staying in Los Angeles. I knew how far it was to Riverside, knew, you know, the traffic and so forth. And, and I thought I had left my hotel in Los Angeles early enough to get there on time. But as it turned out, the traffic was more horrendous than the last time I was there. And I actually showed up almost an hour late. So the service had already been going an hour. And when I walked in the door, Brother Hagen was on the platform and his uh, singers from Ramah were still singing, which I was surprised. I thought by this time, Brother Hagen would have already been speaking. But when I walked in and the usher uh, was going to escort me uh, in to get me a seat, Brother Hagen stood up when I walked in and said, he's here now, you can sit down. You can stop. He said, Brother Jerry, the Lord told me you'd be here tonight and he has a word for you. So he asked me to come up and Brother Hagen said this, this one month after what Brother Copeland said right here. He said, Brother Jerry, God has added new giftings and anointings to your ministry. 
And it is now time for you to move into those giftings, move up, and then move out so that he may use you in them to bless people. So there was two of my mentors, my spiritual fathers, who were hearing the same thing. One year later, July, less than a year later, 1992, I was preaching in uh, Anaheim where Brother Copeland in the Believers Convention. Brother Roberts and Evelyn were in the meeting sitting next to my wife, Carolyn. After the meeting, Brother Roberts talked about how he enjoyed what I had to say. And then a few days later, after we got home, I received a four-page handwritten letter from Brother Roberts. And I'm just reading this one excerpt from it. Jerry, as I listen to you speak in Kenneth's convention this week, I saw a new anointing on you, and it was a prophetic anointing. I encourage you to continue to preach prophetically every time you preach. So all three of my spiritual fathers, mentors, the men that have imparted into my life the most, all were hearing the same thing. And since that time, I began to move into that and, uh, and on purpose set time aside to listen to the Lord as to what's on his agenda for the coming new year. And every year, he gives me a word that I am to begin to decree and to proclaim, and I start proclaiming it the moment I receive it, and then everywhere I go, I, I proclaim it, and I encourage others to pick up on it and proclaim it as well. In fact, there are many uh, churches, uh, not only here in America, but around the world, that pastors have told me numerous times that they eagerly await to hear what the Lord has given me. And then they begin to preach it immediately to their congregations. I had a letter on my desk uh, just this past week where a pastor said, Brother Jerry, ever since we heard you talk about this uh, beginning in January at Brother Copeland's Minister's Conference, we have had our church confess this every time we have a service and said, and we're seeing it come to pass. So I'm not saying that to lift me up or to make me look like I'm something, but I am saying it because I want you to hear it and receive it. I didn't come to play church today. I came to deliver you a prophetic word. And I believe that if you will lay hold upon it and begin to decree it yourself, that you will see it come to pass in your life. Amen. How many of you believe that? Praise God. Amen. See, that's the Bible pattern. Amen. Amen. God said that he, re he does nothing except he first reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And so God is saying that he limits himself as to what he's going to do in the earth until he reveals it to somebody. And then once it is revealed, their responsibility is to begin to decree it. And as they decree it and charge the atmosphere with it, then God begins to follow up and confirms it with signs following. Hallelujah. Would you agree with that? That's the Bible pattern. So on October the 14th, 2014, <clears throat> I was in uh, my prayer room preparing for my annual minister's conference that I do in October every year. And while I was just writing notes and preparing my messages for that meeting, the, the room filled with the presence of God. And I really wasn't thinking about 2015. I was focused on what the Lord wanted me to minister in that conference. And suddenly, the Lord's presence filled the room, <clears throat> and he said these things to me. He said, 2015 will be a year of visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit. Visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit. So I wrote that down. And from that moment, I began decreeing it Everywhere I went, I decreed it in that minister's conference. And consequently, before that meeting was up, we were seeing visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit. As I mentioned, 
uh, some of the pastors that were there. They went home, began decreeing it in their churches. And some of them decree it each and every Sunday, uh, every time they have church. I know George and Terry Pearsons at Eagle Mountain. Uh, I know if there's any two people on the planet that are hungry for a move of God, it's George and Terry Pearsons. And George tells me, Terry tells me, they've been decreeing that. In fact, uh, last night while I was in, the, in my room and just going over some notes about what I wanted to share with you today, I, had, I got a knock on the door and it was someone, uh, a bellman, delivering a gift basket from Eagle Mountain Church from George and Terry. It had a lot of nice, good things in it. And then a card with it, opened a card and it had on the card. And this will be a week of visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. Does your card say that? Does your card say that? Amen. See, they grabbed hold of it. They've been decreeing it ever since they heard it, right along with the things that Brother Copeland has seen in the Spirit. And, and George himself has seen and others have seen. I don't know about you, but I believe in the prophetic word, praise God. Amen. Amen. In fact, we know a scripture, most of you are familiar with it, and we know it saying it this way. Without a vision, the people perish. But in the literal Hebrew, it is actually without a prophetic oracle from God, the people perish. Without a prophetic oracle from God. Now, of course, a prophetic word from God will produce a vision. Amen. So I have a vision for manifestations, visitations, Amen. and demonstrations Amen. of the Holy Spirit everywhere I go. I believe we're going to experience that during the course of this week, praise God. In fact, I don't see anything wrong with us believing for it to happen in every service, praise God. Why have services when we can have encounters with God? I've received numerous newsletters and magazines from other ministers. You know, I, I, I don't know how I got on the mailing list of all these people, but I'm not against it, praise God. And I've, I've seen many newsletters and magazines come across my desk in there, and I'll see in it at some point that phrase, visitations, manifestations, demonstrations from the Holy Spirit. I've seen other ministers talk about it on their television broadcast. What I'm saying is this. The atmosphere is being charged with this prophetic word. I said the atmosphere is being charged with this prophetic word. I get, I get texts from pastors all over Africa. Brother Jerry, we're talking about visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit. You see, that's how it comes to pass. If we can get God's people saying it, decreeing it. What do you suppose would happen in this nation if we could get every man and woman of God decreeing that this is our time for visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Ghost? We'd have a move of God like we've never seen before. Well, get ready. We're going to have that move, praise God. I'll give the Lord another shout if you believe it. Amen. Once again, that's the Bible pattern. God reveals his plans and his purposes, then his people must decree it, and then he brings it to pass. Now, Jesus said once again that, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, we shouldn't think it strange that the Holy Spirit would show us things to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's part of his ministry, is to show us things to come. But what he needs is people with listening ears. He needs people that are sensitive. Amen. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. And verse 9 says, Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Now, this is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. What is he saying? There's some new things that I want to do. God's the God of new things. He said, the former things are come to pass. Now, there's some new things 
that I declare. And before they spring forth, or before they come to pass, I will tell you about them. I remember years ago writing in my margin of my Bible after reading that verse, if you're in the know, you'll be in the flow. Amen. If you're in the know, you'll be in the flow. Hallelujah. I like being in the flow. I don't like being the last one to find out what God's up to. I like being right in the middle of it. Amen. So notice he says, new things do I declare. Notice God didn't say, new things do I do. He said, new things I declare. God says it before he does it. He said, I'm, I'm declaring some new things. Now, if you drop down to verse 18, he says, Hear, you deaf, look, ye blind, that ye may see. But who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things, but thou observeth not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. What is God saying? I'm ready to do some new things. Now, before I do them, I will declare them. But I've got a problem. My servants are spiritually blind and they're spiritually deaf. They don't hear what I want to do. They don't see what I want to do. And consequently, I can't do them until somebody hears them and begins to decree them. Isn't that what he's saying? Yes. Well, he's God. He can do anything. Yes, he can do anything but one thing. He can't violate his own word. He's not going to violate his own word. And he said, I do nothing except I first reveal it. So he's not going to bypass that. He's going to wait until he can find somebody that will listen. And once he finds somebody that's listening, he will reveal it. And then their responsibility is to begin to decree it. And then God will follow up and confirm it with signs following. So what's he saying here? I am ready to do something new. I believe if you've got an ear tuned toward heaven, you're hearing God say the same thing right now. I'm ready to do something new. How many of you sense that in your heart? that God is ready to do something like we have never seen before. That's not every hand in the building. I wish every hand in the building would, would be lifted. Praise God. That God is ready to do something new like we have never seen before. But he's got to have people listening. Now, notice verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Notice God says, if no one's listening and no one's seeing spiritually what I want to do, then the people wind up being robbed and spoiled. Spoiled mean taken from. If they're not hearing what he wants to do, then the people are not going to experience his best. They'll be robbed and spoiled. And then notice he goes on to say, they are all hidden prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith, restore. Everybody say restore. restore. So it appears to me that God is saying, this new thing that I'm ready to do with my people here in Isaiah 42 is to bring restoration to them. He said, but I've got a problem. I can't restore what has been taken from them because my servants are spiritually blind. They're spiritually deaf. They're not hearing what I want to say. They don't see what I want to do. And consequently, nobody is saying restore so I can't do this new thing until somebody hears and somebody says. Amen. Are you still with me? That's the Bible pattern. That's the pattern all the way back from Genesis. Amen. Notice, Jesus didn't just pop into the earth. 
It was spoken. It was revealed and it was spoken. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. How many times do you remember reading in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus saying, and, and this was done uh, as it had been prophesied or as it was written, and now it was time for it to be fulfilled. But somebody had to hear that from God, Amen. and somebody had to speak it. Amen. 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 And over a long period of time, God would raise up another prophet, and he'd begin speaking it as well and just kept charging the atmosphere with it. That's what Peter was referring to on the day of Pentecost when he stood up and said, this is that. This is that what? This is what the prophet Joel declared and charged the atmosphere with. He said there was coming a day when God would pour out his spirit and we're in it now. That's what Peter was saying. Joel heard from God and he spoke it. And then when it was time for it to come to pass, Peter recognized this is what Joel prophesied. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So it was revealed by God. Somebody heard it, began decreeing it, and it came to pass. Amen. I've heard from the Lord. Amen. This is our time for visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Ghost like we have never experienced before. I'm charging the atmosphere with it. Will anybody join with me? Let's charge the atmosphere with it and let's give God the opportunity to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then look at verse 23. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will give ear to this? Is there anybody in here going to give ear to this? Look at your neighbor and say, I give ear to this. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Hallelujah. So we have determined already, praise God, that we are all in agreement that this is our time for visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Ghost like we have never experienced before. Would you say amen once again? Let me ask that question again. Will you give ear to this? Will you listen to the Spirit of God? Will you be open for visitations, manifestations, and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit? You know, you may have a loved one that you're praying for right now. And you've preached to them until you're almost blue in the face. But I'm telling you what, when they begin to see manifestations and demonstrations from the Holy Spirit, it will get their attention like nothing else can. We are living in the greater glory days. Jesus said that those that believe on him, they will not only do the works that he did, but even greater works. I believe that's where the body of Christ is right now. We're headed for the greater works. Jesus will be glorified God will be magnified and people are going to come to know him like never before. So let me encourage you, stay open to the Holy Spirit. Give ear to what God is saying today. You know, we have a special offer we'd like to make available to you. My book entitled Every Day a Blessing Day. Every Day a Blessing Day. What a way to live. Getting up every day expecting the blessing of God to manifest in your life in some way. And then a three CD series entitled Provision for Your Vision. You know, maybe you're a minister and you're watching today and you're struggling in your ministry and you can't figure out how to get it financed. Well, let me tell you that God has promised that where He guides, he provides. And there are some powerful truths that I share on these messages about how to position yourself for provision for your vision. I want to encourage you to order these products. In fact, our announcer is about to show you uh, these products once again and tell you how that you can order them. And I want you to pay very close attention. Get something you can write with so that you can place your order because once you get these in your home, I'm telling you, you're going to be glad that you order them and you're going to be glad that you begin to study them and lay hold upon the revelation they contain. Watch this and I'll be back in just a moment.
It is God's desire that you walk in His blessing every day. In the book, Every Day a Blessing Day, Jerry Savelle reveals what the blessing of God is and how this supernatural empowerment is designed to make you prosper and excel. When the world says downsize and decrease, you can rise above. You can experience the joy and freedom that come from making every day a blessing day. In the three CD series, Provision for Your Vision, Jerry Savelle shares God-given wisdom on carrying out vision. In this message, you will learn how to know your vision is from God, why God only entrusts His vision to the vision. Visionary, how God will provide for you to carry out His vision, the biblical checklist for receiving your harvest, the possible stumbling blocks to receiving the provision, and much more. Don't wait. Request this visionary package including Every Day a Blessing Day and provision for your vision. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org. Gain the understanding you need to apply the power of God's blessing and carry out your vision today. Listen, don't delay. Get these products in your home right away. You can contact jerrysavelle.org and place your order for these products, the book, Every Day a Blessing Day, and the CDs, Provision for Your Vision. Powerful tools that will help you grow in the Lord, help you increase in your knowledge of the Lord. You know, one of the things that is so vital and important to this ministry is our partners. Our partners help us uh, continue to expand. Our partners help us to grow, help us to reach out to other nations of the world with this uncompromising word of faith. And partners are very special. In fact, this morning I got up thinking about how very special my partners are. I've had partners that have been with me for over 40 years. That is amazing to me. 40 years they've been supporting this ministry on a monthly basis. I'd like to encourage you to prayerfully consider being my partner. I want you to watch this announcement, and it'll tell you how you can become a partner, and I want you to know in advance, I appreciate your partnership, and I'll be praying for you each and every day. Our mission motivate, evangelize, disciple, reach out. Jerry Savelle Ministries International fulfills this mission by taking the good news to every walk of life with inspiring and motivational resources, chariots of light Christian bikers, Africa famine relief, pastoral training, television broadcast. When you partner with Jerry Savelle Ministries International, we're fulfilling this mission together. Together, we're spreading the good news. We're encouraging and equipping people from around the world to be winners through Christ Jesus. Together, we're feeding thousands in famine-stricken lands. We're supporting widows and orphans as Jesus commanded. Become a partner today at jerrysavelle.org. Together, we're fulfilling God's purposes and plans.